Welcome to the video. How to lose the last 100 pounds. We've got a question. This is from my coaching group. If you want coaching group, if you want coaching from Duro on weight loss, relationships, cycling, running tips, YouTube success. You want to be a successful YouTuber? Go to Duro.com and ask me any questions in there. Every question gets answered. And uh, if it doesn't get answered, just start a new thread. I guess it's a great group. It's uh, you know, it's powerful. It's a powerful resource. It's it's a resource I wish I had when I first got into this lifestyle. YouTube, etc. Relationships. Let's get into it. This is a question. All right. I'm a 40 year old man. I'm 5 foot 11, 299 pounds. That's about my 6 foot. It's about the same height, 5 11, same thing. 299 pounds. I'm maybe 150, 170. I don't know. I have got any scales, but. So this person's about 130, 150 pounds more than me. They want to lose it. They had gastric sleeve surgery back in 2012. Lost a ton of weight. Gastric sleeve, gastric bypass, whatever you want to call it, it works because it makes you be able to eat less. Force you to eat less, otherwise you're going to have discomfort. So I'm totally against it. I wish this person came to me before that. How much does it cost to do gastric bypass? And the lifestyle, I can't believe people do it. And I'm not judging this person, I'm just saying, I'm just like, it, it, it pains me that people have to make such an extreme changes in their lifestyle, you know, to their body rather, when they could just live on sugar and rice and fruit and fruit juice and corn and pasta and fat-free vegan pizzas and all the good stuff, sweet drinks. And people say, oh, that's extreme, oh, that's extreme. Gastric bypass, that's extreme. Chemo radiation, feeling depressed, feeling being scared of sugar, being scared of carbs. Imagine that reality. I don't know. That's that's not my reality. So no judgment to this person. They've they've uh, if anything, thumbs up to them for wanting to get results, for for being so motivated to get results that they've done something like gastric bypass. Even though I don't rate the surgery the procedure, I think it's a total scam. But I, 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 I rate the underlying intention there of that person. I want to get better, whatever it takes. Okay, I'll do that. So that's what we're getting at. So I rate that. I understand. Well, now they're over here asking me for advice because it doesn't work. Gastric bypass doesn't work long term. All right, it might get quick results, but then you go back to your old bad habits. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a a massive band-aid that costs 10 grand, 50 grand, 100, whatever it costs. So surgeons are making big bank. I don't know if you gastric bypass surgeon. Making big bank. Big bank. On a band-aid. It's probably one of the most expensive band-aids out there. So we got down to 190 pounds. I started abusing alcohol and caffeine. Alcohol. What's that? It's a carbohydrate. Caffeine. What's caffeine? It forces carbohydrate into your cell. So whenever people cut carbs... They increase alcohol, they increase caffeine every single time. If it's not alcohol, it's caffeine. If it's not caffeine, it's alcohol, or it's even both. Every single time. People cut sugar, they increase alcohol, they increase caffeine. Or it might even be Ritalin or Adderall every single time. Or it could even be cocaine for some people. Or crack. And if it, if people are not, that's not too hard. My doctor didn't say that. This is My, my advice is real-world advice. Right, I want a peer reviewed study that back thought what you just said. Go and wait 10 or 20 or 50 years for that if you want. How about common sense? Go and use common sense. Look at your family members, look at your buddies on Facebook or whatever. All right, I'm getting a little bit, a bit frustrated here, but look at these people out there on the comments. Oh, sugar's bad. And you see them like Starbucks, coffee, organic. It's organic coffee. It's good. It's good. You know, this oh, sugar's bad. Coffee's good. Would you give coffee to a baby? Anyway, anyway, all right. So, this person's, you know, they're just in it's just that, it's that same calorie focused carb trap, all right. Scared of carbs, up goes the alcohol, then the alcohol makes you feel depressed, dick doesn't work properly, life goes to shit. Caffeine makes you feel up, and then makes you feel down. You feel anxious and anxiety. Caffeine is, if I wanted to create mental health episode in someone, up the caffeine. Maybe give them smoking cigarettes as well. Cigarettes and caffeine. And alcohol, I have a lot to answer for. Um, I would rather date a girl who drank two glasses of wine a day than two cups of coffee a day. In fact, I wouldn't. I wouldn't date a girl. 
a girlfriend. I wouldn't if they drank coffee every day. I wouldn't just up and down. women up and down as it is, but caffeine. <laughs> caffeine destroys people's personalities, man. It makes them into nuts. Made me nuts. I'm still nuts. Such on bananas. So get flick off the caffeine. I love that this person's like wanting to self betterment. So this person is 300 pounds now. He wants to lose weight fast. He wants to lose weight fast. He has a full kitchen, rice cooker, instant pot, etc. All you need is a rice cooker. I need to know what I should be eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I need really basic recipes because I'm not a good cook. Me too. I also need to know how much should I be eating. Should I create a calorie deficit to starve myself and force it? And just, oh, I'm hungry, but I can't eat because I'm doing intermittent fasting. Can't eat. <laughs> nah, man, that's torture. Got to take phenomen pills, can't eat. Upper top suppressant, brush your teeth. Extra mints, can't eat. <laughs> That's torture. Remember Sarah Wilson from I Quit Sugar? She jumped out of a moving car. She was suffering such bad anxiety from caffeine abuse and lack of sugar. She jumped out of a moving car. A rich girl, not, easy, not too bad in the eye. A lot of social stuff, a lot to look forward to. Jumped out of a moving car because she was so depressed in the caffeine and the serotonin was so low from sugar restriction, she wanted to end her life. Crazy, but true. Should I create a calorie deficit or eat as much as I want? What do you think I'm going to say? I have a treadmill and a bunch of dumbbells. I have quit the non-vegan food, great, but I still need to quit the caffeine and alcohol. I need all the help I can get. All and any advice is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance. This guy, he, he, I sense he has gratitude. And gratitude is like the foundation of life. If you don't have gratitude in life, then you've lost. I don't care how hot your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your side chick or side dude is or how much money's in the bank, what car you drive, where you live, who you've got in your network group. If you don't have gratitude, your life fucking sucks. It's a fail instantly because you're constantly depressed. Even if you're eating the best diet in the world, you're getting all the, you know. If you don't have gratitude, <laughs> done and everything's out the door everything's out the door doesn't matter what you weigh how many likes you get whatever without gratitude nothing's everything's for, for what you know it's all temporary happiness but gratitude if that's your foundational current i have Im immense gratitude so whatever happens in my life it will rock me a little bit i've got that foundation of gratitude to center myself back onto that it might sound woo-woo to some people, but it's true. Gratitude, man. Go hang out in LA with the OC girls and guys, and then go out to the, to the, the slums in Davao City, and I've done both, and see what the gratitude is. Like, you give someone a, a, a bruised banana in a slum in the Philippines, and they're like, oh, oh thanks. Oh, is, that, is that for me? Thanks, mate. You know what I mean? And then, uh, you know, like the, the real slum people not the people just beg for money give me money give me money give me money. that's the entitled, entitled brats that we're, we're helping over there but like the real the you know the traditional slum people who just have a lot of gratitude you know and they live in a lot of pretty you know interesting situation um so yeah unearned money is the greatest evil really gandhi said that unearned money is the greatest evil it just makes people so entitled when you're entitled you have no gratitude you're like just give me give me give me give me give me and i can pick out those people really quickly now, especially in person. So if this person seems to have a foundation of gratitude, that's, 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 that's everything. We can talk calories and hormones and macros and work, workouts, but that's that eh, foundation, gratitude. All right, that's done over here. That's that's the foundation. That's step one. That's, everything's based on that because you can't build much in life if you don't have the gratitude because eventually it will just crush through. That If your gratitude level is really thin, all the weight of life will just crush through it and you'll be just depressed and destitute. Like Rob Williams. Killing yourself. Rob Williams had no gratitude. That's why he ended his life. You know? He was, went to drugs and that for happiness because he had no gratitude. He's just constantly chasing more money and fame and all sorts of stuff, material stuff. But the ground and that, and that just has builds this massive empire of stuff and fame and money, which all just <clears throat> cave through that thin foundation of gratitude. You want gratitude like bedrock, right? So whatever foundation you build in life, it's just, it stays true. And uh, what would I do if I was this guy, 300 pounds, put myself in someone's footsteps, what would I do? Put myself in their shoes. I would never drive a car. I would never get in the car until I was at, you know, a lean body physique. 
I, I would flip my life over. I wouldn't. I would live on the street. I would do whatever it took, you know, without being uh, chasing quick fix fads. Right? I know people who resort to drugs to lose weight. They, they start to abuse thyroid medication. They they take uh, fentanyl. They do apple cider suppressant. But all it does is it band aids your behaviour, band aids your belief system. It doesn't treat the cause. So you can take all the drugs in the world you want and lose weight, but it will come back on, you know, because you can't stay on drugs forever because what happens is your heart will fail or your kidney will fail or your mental health will fail so much that life's not really worth living anymore. Right? So drugs is how some people do it, but it ain't sustainable. Look at all the people in Hollywood who are just depressed as heck. Right? And maybe they're slim and skinny and pretty or surgical or whatever, but you don't want to hang around them. You know, once you get to know me, you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll have a go and talk to the wall. This person's so damaged and frantic. You know, so the only solution really is uh, that high carb, low fat, vegan lifestyle. It's the only thing that's going to work. You can do calorie restrict and like eat little bits here and there and like do all this restriction nonsense and have a, just a totally fucking insane life of depression and fear of like oh my god i'm gonna gain weight and your thyroid like when you when you starve yourself with carbs your body instantly down regulates t3 and t4 production and your tsh level goes right up your thyroid stimulating hormone goes up because your pituitary and your hypothalamus go hang on there's not enough t3 t4 let's try and get this thing back in order right? and then your body shuts those things down the t3 t4 because you don't have enough carbs and your body's like oh we're in famine Let's slow down everything. Let's slow down the metabolism. Let's slow down the drive because we've got not enough carb calories coming in. Then, well, let's slow down the output. Let's wind down the mo the motivation hormones. The, the motivation hormones being the thyroid, etc. Because the carbs aren't there. Otherwise, you it's like you run. It's like you're overheating your motor in your car. The body, just, the car just shuts it down. The computer system goes, okay, turn it off. Turn off the motor. It's getting too hot. The brain's like, turn off the th hormones because there's not enough carbs. Here. We're in famine mode. It doesn't make any sense for survival to keep exerting calories when there's nothing coming in. No carb calories coming in. Right? So you can eat fat calories, and yeah, but your body will still downregulate your thyroid hormones because it needs carbs. Right? Fat calories are like emergency calories. Fats in nature is very, very rare. Sugar's everywhere. You've got starchy root vegetables. You've got sweet fruit. You've got sugar cane grass that grows wild You know, in the equatorial areas. And um, people are like, what about Eskimos? It's like, hey, they're, they're people have migrated north and south for warfare or whatever, or, or isolation. They have, humans were anything to survive, right? So if you want to go and eat seal intestines and penguin nuts, you go do that. Right? I'm going to be eating my mangoes and my rice and my vegan pizzas and my sugar and my drinks. I'll be doing that. You, you go and do those things if you want. And smell like a, a goat scrotum. You know, it's, it, it's just insane what people eat out there. It's like, oh, man. Just to lose some weight. And I'm like, come on, man. You can eat pizza and get lean. Vegan high-carb pizza. Hold the vegan cheese. Hold the oil. So eat Mexican food. Our friend loves Mexico. I love Mexican food, man. You know, some tortillas, beans, and stuff like that. Just hold the fat. Keep it vegan. Eat as much as you want. You, know, you have to eat as much as you, carbs as you want. Otherwise, what's going to happen to your thyroid hormones? They're going to tank. When you don't get enough carbs, your cortisol spikes up. What is cortisol? Cortisol is a hormone that's produced by your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit on top of your kidneys. And your adrenal glands are your, like, they help regulate sugar in your body. So if, you go, if you're running low in carbs, your adrenals will fire up. You get sort of adrenaline spike and, that's the, and the cortisol going up to like get any bits of sugar and just force them into the muscles for like, you know, fight or flight and worse. So if you're constantly spiking your cortisol from lack of sugar, lack of carbs, then eventually you get what's called adrenal fatigue. And then your mood Boom, depression, really strong, hits it. So, and same with caffeine. When you have caffeine, that spikes your cortisol because caffeine's a neurotoxin, it's adrenaline, it's like floating around the system. The body's like, hey, this could damage the brain. Let's, let's open up the, 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 the capillaries, the veins, arteries. Let's flush out this neurotoxin caffeine. People are like, caffeine's not a neurotoxin. Look it up. Caffeine is from the coffee bean or the tea leaf. And caffeine's job in nature is a natural pesticide, right? <laughs> so all those people drinking coffee saying, sugar's a drug, sugar's a drug. No, no, sugar's a nutrient. Sugar, aka sucrose, it's a nutrient. 
caffeine's the drug. Caffeine. I use caffeine a few times a year for you know various long distance rides or whatever. Didn't use any yesterday though. And um, but I very rarely use it because next day I feel just like melancholy. You know, it's like oh the sky's a bit more grey. So I, I rarely use it. Um, I've got just got a few energy gels left over from years ago. And I, you know. But I I, re, I use caffeine maybe a, you know a few times a year, but maybe 20, 30 milligram dosages. Average cup of coffee is about 100 milligrams. So very, very minimal usage. Same with too much chocolate. It's like that melancholy effect next day. Don't like the feeling. Milo, etc. And, uh, you know, I like feeling good naturally. And so anyway, you have this, uh, this neurotoxin in the body, you know, and it wipes your body full of adrenaline and your cortisol goes up, and your fat storage goes up, etc. So just look up high cortisol, caffeine, high cortisol, low carb diet. You know, it causes adrenal fatigue. And then you're feeling crap. It doesn't matter what your body composition is. If you're feeling crap, you're feeling crap. It doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank. If you're feeling crap, you're feeling crap. Right? It doesn't matter who's, you know, giving you girth or swallowing your load, whatever. If you're feeling crap, you're feeling crap. All right. And so this is what people don't understand. They're like, oh, if I just had this body, I'll feel happy. No, no, no. If you can't be happy at 400 and 500 pounds, you won't be happy at bikini model, model stats because when you get there, you go, oh, these people are using me for my body. I don't like, I don't like. like you know, you're like, you know, the same people who didn't talk to you because you're overweight now will talk to you because they go, like, oh, this person's hot. I'll get something out of them. And then you go, hang on, you wouldn't talk to me beforehand. So that creates another reality of depression. Oh, these people are so fake. You know, you want approval from these people. Then once you get it, because you would fit their criteria, and then you go, hang on, you don't talk to me because I've got YouTube subscribers, or I've got money, or I've got these looks, or whatever. You know what? You know? So if you can't be happy right now, here moment, you won't be happy when your kids are doing meth. You won't be happy when your body hormones change, etc. Uh, so you've got to be happy now. Simple as that. People make su such a powerful mistake in life. Um, and you won't hear this from Eric Berg and all those other charlatans out there about the happiness reality that, uh, you know, I, I, I form the weight stuff because that gets hooks people in. But it doesn't matter what you weigh. Happiness is a choice in the moment. Uh -huh. And it's a lot easier to be happy when your hormones are actually ticking over. And by doing that, you have to have enough carbohydrate. So if you cut your carbs because you listen to some idiot on the internet, uh -huh. listen to this idiot. I know what I'm talking about. You cut your carbs, you cut your mood. You cut your serotonin, you cut your dopamine. People say sugar's as addictive as cocaine and heroin. That's true. That's a sound bite. Cocaine, heroin, they raise dopamine. Sugar raises dopamine. Getting a, a hug from your mum or your dad or someone you value gives you dopamine. You know? That should say that hugs from your mum or your dad or people you value, that's as addictive as cocaine. And it is. Because it's like, but it doesn't destroy like cocaine and heroin do and caffeine do. Right? Dopamine is important in life. Dopamine is happiness in life. It helps you be, be more happy. So get your dopamine sources from your carbs, your rice, sugars, your fruits, your sunshine, your exercise, hang out with the cats and dogs and animals in nature. All right? Don't try and get dopamine release and hug on a crocodile because then a crocodile will eat you. Yeah, but this is what we have in life. We have these people just out there doing these sound bites and then uneducated people go, oh yeah, like sugar's bad. And then they try and avoid the sugar and they're, they're basically walking backwards into a, a Mack truck trying to avoid a mosquito that has no little stinger anymore. Like a mouthpiece, you know what I mean? That's what people are doing. They're walking backwards and they're, oh, sugar's bad, I'm going to walk backwards. And there's a Mack truck coming. And that Mack truck is depression, cortisol spikes, high cortisols, you know, low dopamine, low serotonin. They're walking into that back of that Mack truck. That's, you know, the back turned to a, and back, bang. And they wonder why they're feeling so suicidal or so bad or just, I don't know what's going on with myself, blah, 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 blah. Uh, these, these are the things at age 42 I can tell people, you know, coaching thousands of people. And I've known people who have committed suicide. I had an argument with a guy in 2009 in Koh Penang, Thailand, at a yoga retreat. He was smoking durries, drinking his coffee, had big dark circles under his eyes. He's a French guy. Looked like maybe taking a bit of steroids. And he's just like, you know, he sort of, he looked good. You know, people go, oh, he looks fit, he looks strong. But he's under his eyes. He's like, oh, and I could tell he's just so frantic and manic. He's like, sugar's bad, sugar's bad. And he, he was as passionate against sugar as I was pro-sugar, you know? And 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 the next day, um, well, that night, he got arrested by Thai police, and next day, he hanged himself in a Thai prison cell, committed suicide. Uh, so this is my reality. I've had thousands upon thousands of conversations with people. I've seen people kill themselves from sugar deficiency, 
from sh glucose exhaustion, from low dopamine, from not enough sugar, from you know, chasing dopamine hit from cigarettes and, and coffee and alcohol and avoiding the sugar and having such depression, they hang themselves, they kill themselves. Such a selfish act. Not caring about your family, just going, I feel really bad, I'm going to end it all. I don't care about my family or my community or anything. I don't care about the workers who find me. I just feel really bad. This is me, 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 me. And that's what happens when you don't have enough sugar. You become this like, it's a, it's a psychosis. It's a psychosis. And it, it is very hard to get people to get a cup here, put some water in that, pour some sugar in there, go, hey, drink that. Do you know how many psychosis are out there? Like, sugar. Yeah. If you can't fill half a cup up with sugar and drink water and stir it around, maybe put some ice cubes in it and just sip that, drink that, you've got a psychosis going on, like anti-sugar psychosis. And your life quality is, is if you, this is a sugar test. If you don't say, okay, sugar, glucose, fructose, sucrose, good, bang. Feeds my brain, feeds my cells, drink it. If you can't do that, then the quality of your life you're living is much more subpar than it could be. Much more. That's a psychosis, a fear of sugar. The most easily digested food on the planet. The food that they give you when you're in a hospital in a coma to keep you alive. Refined sugar. That what's found in fruits. Every sweet fruit is contains sucrose. And people say, oh, we'll just get it from the fruit. Yeah, you can do that. If you're lucky enough to find high quality fruit that has enough sugar in it. Most fruit, you can, I could sit down and eat 30 bananas and not be full. Most bananas, because you'd be only I mean, full volume wise, but you're still like, I need something sweet, you know, because there's not enough sugar in the bananas growing today. They pick so green. Tell me with the mangoes. It's like, it's very, very hard to get sweet mangoes. And people, oh, no, that's not true. Any supermarket has mangoes, isn't it? These people aren't athletic. They're not fruit eaters. They're just like, you know, they don't have, they're not talking from experience. It's like someone goes, well, I'll just spend a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars on a bike. When you could just get a Huffy from Walmart for $100. A bike's a bike. It's got two wheels. It's got two pedals. They, they, that's what people are thinking. Oh, well, you just eat fruit. That'll give you enough energy. Why not? Fruit's full of sugar. I don't eat too much fruit. And I'm 800 pounds because bacon's good, though. This is, this is a reality. You know, I think a lot of people out there can understand what's going on. So this person, I would also ride a bike. I would get rid of your car. You know, if you want to, this person said, I want results fast. So the faster you want results the right way, then the more work you have to put in. And I just recommend get on the bike, man. Get yourself on a bike. You're 300 pounds, so don't get a road bike because it might snap. Get a hardtail 29er mountain bike and put some slick tires on that. Just use that for transport. Get some, you, know, you can use clipping pedals if you want. You can just get some uh, as pedaling innovation pedals, as flat pedals, and just use that's your transport. Get a bike like a D-lock. That's your transport. Put some packages in there. To carry groceries. That's your transport. And people go, oh, but they'll laugh at me because I'm 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 fat. Who cares, man? If, unless people are paying you rent, doing everything for you in life, their opinion doesn't really matter, you know. And if you're still living at home with your parents, and you don't like their 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 way of living, then you got to move out. Be your own man. Self-made is where it's at. And so I'd recommend this person jumps on the bike. Hundred percent. The bike's just like. Get your oxygen going, exercise is healthy, cycling's low impact, doesn't that damage your joints, wear some bright colored clothing, wear a bright colored helmet, lights at night, pay attention to the road, don't be looking down, oh, oh, there's a car in front of me, pay attention, and man, you, you shred it, I know a guy who did, who shredded 150 pounds off his body, riding a bike, everywhere he went, didn't go, he was OCD about not getting in a taxi, this is in Thailand. And he was just, I'd see him go to 7-Eleven and come out with all these uh, sugar drinks. He was living on jam and bread. And he, he lost so much weight so quick. Cause he was just millicent about it. Like he was just full on about it. And uh, and he's still lean today. He's still lean today. But then at, the, at one point he started cutting out sugar. He started cutting out sugar. Even though that's what got him results. Just to maybe lose the last 10 pounds or whatever it was. But he started cutting out the sugar and trying to be just on whole foods. And then his mood took a massive dive. He started having little minor conflicts with people and, and banter and yeah, nothing serious, but his definitely mood dropped off. You know, like people didn't really want to socialize him that much because he's, you know, not getting enough, enough of the good stuff. You need the sugar. Life's meant to be sweet. All right? If you are one of the people out there who live on an amazing fruit farm and every piece of fruit you pick is just bursting with flavor and sugarness, you know, it's just an incredible fruit, then... 
hit tip of the hat to you, you know. And uh, those places do exist in the world, but they're uh, they're very very rare. For most of us, though, adding sugar to our fruit is going to be a necessity. Otherwise, we just live in that constant craving of fatty foods or caffeine or alcohol reality where we're constantly using self-discipline to say, no, 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 you know, you got to get the, the carbs in, the, the calories from the carbohydrate and as much as you want. If you're hungry, eat more and never feel guilty for carbs. If you feel guilty for carbs, it's like people out there saying, if you're touching yourselves bad, it's a sin from God. You should feel guilty for that. Okay, man, there's people out there who are, you know, they, they, they don't, want, don't want to touch themselves or whatever, or masturbation or whatever, because they think, oh, it's a, it's a sin from the Lord. And hey, if that's your reality, you know, it's people out there say, I can't have sex until I have, get married. And they go marry some fuck boy. And he pumps and dumps them and uh, whatever. I knew, I knew a girl like that. She was like, I'm not going to have sex until I'm married. And, you know, I'm going to find a very wholesome Christian guy. And she married this, this fuck boy dude who was just in the Christian church to hook up with the, uh, the virgin hotties. And, uh, she, she, he married her really quickly and it lasted like a couple of months and then he was like off to the next one, you know? And I was like, I was telling him the whole way. I was like, you should test ride before you decide, you know what I mean? Like, this is, like, this is silly, you know? And so she was like a divorcee at like 21 or whatever, you know? Just because sticking with these stupid guy in the sky rules, you know? And this is a guy in the sky rule. Sugar's bad. Oh, they said, they said sugar's bad. Who's they? The guy in the sky on the internet, you know, just com people, common sense, common sense, you know, common sense. Test ride before you decide, get your carbs in and never restrict them. End of story. Ride your bike, burn fat on oil. And people say, oh, but it's okay if you're doing exercise, you can eat carbohydrates. Well, what about lazy people? Well, I'm a lazy person. I sit on my ass all day and do nothing in my life. What about me? What did I eat? More fat and protein to get even more fat? But protein makes you lean, doesn't it? <laughs> protein makes you lose weight. What, what do people in the gyms eat to bulk, to gain weight? Protein. Protein. They have the carbs as well to have strength to lift the weights and the steroids, etc. But protein is the essence, isn't it? It's the building blocks of life. So if you want to build more body weight, eat more protein. Right? It, just, it just stores more weight. Even if you're not using steroids, it'll just it'll gain, you'll gain more weight. It'll turn into the fat, but you'll be more heavy. That's all a lot of guys looking for. That's fine. So this is this is just where it's at. And uh, my video is essentially the same stuff every week for the last 12 years. Yeah. A little bit extra here and there. It's the same stuff. These are fundamentals. These are fundamentals. And most people out there, 99% of people out there, are too devoid of common sense to see the logic I'm talking. 99% of people out there. I get that. And I'm not frustrated by that anymore. I just I understand it. Just like, this is a cup. It's a coffee cup. It's never had actually a coffee in it. All right? This is water my water cup. I like, got a coffee cup. It's, it's a coffee cup that I use for water. I got it from a race in Thailand. I understand that if I drop this cup on a hard surface, it will break. I understand that. I'm not frustrated. I don't go, what a stupid cup. Cup, if you if I drop you on a hard surface, you're going to break. I don't walk up to people going, wow, you're dumb. You don't understand carbohydrates. I get it. 99% of people don't want to understand it. Not that they, they won't understand They don't want to understand it. People want to keep eating their, you know, their bacon or, or whatever, or keep up their eating disorders or whatever, because that's their identity, you know. They identify as a sick person. They identify as an anorexic or whatever. That, and I understand I'm talking to the one percenters out there, you know. So I, I get that <clears throat> at a deep level. And I'm no longer frustrated. And people out there, don't be frustrated at your family or whatever when they don't get that. They don't, they don't want to get this. They don't want to get this, all right? Like you'll be, you went to university, you got a PhD, you can't understand carbohydrates, you don't understand the Krebs cycle, you're a professor in biology, you don't understand the Krebs cycle. They don't want to understand it. Right? They don't want to. So say it once, and then move on. And it's like me getting paid on YouTube to say it over and over and over and over thousands of times, alright? That's the biggest thing. If you're living with someone, your wife or your husband, you only have to say it once. If you have to say it more than once, they don't want to change. All right. So next, move on. Move on from that topic or move on from that person. Just have the acceptance they don't want to change. They're not going to change. Maybe in one in a billion they might. But if someone says no, the chances are them changing are very, very slim indeed. Like that's that's very, very slim indeed. It can happen. 
But it's again, it's a point one percent. When someone really denies it and goes against it, and they change afterwards, that's 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 very 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 rare. So don't base your happiness on people changing. You run home, you're like, wow, I found the solution. You tell people like, yeah, great, mate. They don't want to change. You know, <laughs> they want to stay lost. They want to stay on the path they're at. It's like if you're in the forest and you're trying to find the exit. And you find it, oh my God, and you run back to people, hey guys, I found the car park, it's down here, there's what's the water and the food are. And they're like, yeah, great, mate. No, nah, we want to stay lost. We're victims in the forest. We're lost here. You know, this is our identity. We're, we're victims. We're lost people. That's our, that's our identity. We don't identify with success. And you're like, what? Well, I'm going to the car park, I'm going to the food and water. See you later. You know? So some people just want to be victims. And that you, they will waste your entire lifetime if you let them, trying to convince them of something they don't want to be convinced of. Right? That's that's just like a, I've just saved people out there like years of lifetime and frustration. People just don't want it; they don't want it. So that's 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 one of that's one of the hardest things in my life is 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 to like accept that. <laughs> and I've been chasing people. But no, no, do this, you can do this, you could be a superstar on YouTube. They don't want to be. They don't want to be super lean and healthy and have a happy relationship. They don't want to find the part of their dreams. They don't want it. If they did, they'd be like, shit, you know your shit, tell me more. Uh, that's why I have my coaching group. People want more, join my coaching group. Or people ask me questions. You know, they, want, they want some solutions. That's as simple as that. Uh, that's why in life, like... Oh man, maybe it's time to get older, more mature, more, more wise. But back in the day, man, I'll be on people's backs. I'm like, come on, come on, come on. And I'm just like, last, it's in the last couple of years. Like I've, I've ended relationships with people. Not, not, I didn't, I never, didn't hate them, but I'm like, this person doesn't want it. I'm getting frustrated. They're getting frustrated. Am I pound pandering? And I can't, I'm not a person who can just stay silent. When someone's doing something that's bad for themselves, others, I have to keep, like a woodpecker on a... So I just had to, you know, end relationships with these people. Because I'm like, I'm doing my head in. I'm doing their head in. This isn't working. They don't want it. And I don't want to be around people who don't want it. So I was like, go hang out with people who do want it. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's a huge one. Like, and that's hard. That's, that's probably one of the hardest things. When you're woke, when you're switched on, when you understand how the human body works and how society works, and you know, and seeing that, and go, hey, don't you want this path? You know, don't you want the, the yellow brick road? And people are like, no, no, it's okay. It's just, just, I don't know. It's, it's uh, I did two hundred k bike ride yesterday, and I love the long rides. Just low watts, going slow, you know, going slow. So I pass up a hill, then I'll jump on. But otherwise, just cruise along at twenty k an hour, just just dawdling along, listening to audiobook, slowing down so the wind's not too loud in the ears for the audiobook. And uh, just a non-ego ride, you know, just like, just whatever, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's such a, being able to ride so slow, but yet it's also glad to be able to ride so fast, you know. When I want to, it, it, it's, uh, you know, the slower you can ride, the faster you can ride. Because if you, if you can't hold back, then you can't hold on, you know. Most people in the middle, like, just don't know, hold, don't know to slow down, don't know to speed up. And once you do those extremes, Riding at walking pace or slow and walking pace, and then riding at a pace where you think your heart's going to explode, then those two extremes are, are pretty cool to, to understand and feel. And just doing those long rides, just having that reflection, it's just like, man, like, you know, just looking around this corona paranoia right now, it, it is, uh, it's just amazing to see how 99% of people out there are just like, they don't want it. They don't want the option, really. They're confused because they're scared of social, dis social disapproval, they're scared of rejection from their family or or whatever and so people it's, it's, there's a lot of work to be done out there and uh you know and we're talking like one percenters out there who want to who really want to change themselves there's a big difference between interest and commitment anyway that's the video 34 minutes just one take rolling off the tongue i could talk for hours in this one especially people ask me questions um, if you want more information grab my ebooks from doingrun.com they're constantly updated free updates via email and uh, we'll see you on the road. But yeah, just just carbs, man. Never skip your carbs. Never rely on stimulants for energy. That's false energy. That's nerve energy. It's adrenaline energy. Carbohydrates are fuel. You want to rely on fuel energy 
glucose-derived ATP energy, muscle glycogen energy. That's dopamine. That's the good stuff, the serotonin. People are popping Zoloft and Xanax, the SSRI medications that raise your serotonin levels because they're not eating enough carbs. And then there's a whole host of side effects to suicidal ideases and all this stuff with the medications and the weight gain and all that. Treat the cause, people, not the symptom. Unless you want to be in that 99% group and just focus on the symptoms, not the cause. If the video's been helpful, give it a thumbs up. If it hasn't been, give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment, we'll get to it. Thanks for your support, game. Always eat the carbs. Never skip your meals. Eat breakfast early. Drink water like a beast. Go to bed early. Say no to drugs.